Many wonder why the city keeps allowing property owners to develop their property into residential developments when our roads seem to get fuller every year. An understanding of state law on land use and development and the residential development process can help answer this question. This video will be the first in a two-part series to explain state regulations the city must follow in regards to residential development and property owner rights. In this first video, we will be using a question and answer format to help residents understand the various state laws that protect the rights of property owners and their ability to develop their property for some profitable or desirable use. The following are questions we hear often from residents, so let's get started. Why doesn't the city stop accepting land development applications? Developers are property owners and have property rights protected under state and federal law. These rights are consistent with other property rights, such as a current resident's right to improve their property. Under Utah state law, the city is required to timely review a development application to verify it is completed correctly and that it meets city code. If it does, the city is required to timely approve the application following the review process. If an application doesn't meet code, the city is required to work with the applicant to amend their project or application to meet code. Once an application meets the required code, the city is obligated to take action and assist in moving the application forward. Why doesn't the city deny a development application? The city cannot deny an application that meets city regulations and applicable law. If the city denies an application, the applicant can appeal the land use decision and possibly have the decision overturned. This could open up the city to the possibility of further legal action on the part of the property owner and further repercussions that could negatively impact current residents. Can the city stop issuing building permits? The city cannot deny a building permit for a recorded lot if the building is allowed on the parcel and it meets building code. The city has 10 business days to approve a building permit application unless changes are needed for city regulation or building code compliance. Why does the city allow property to be developed before more roads are built to handle the traffic the new development can cause? Many have made the argument that growth should fund itself. The mayor and city council fully support this. For all development activity, the city charges fees based on the impact the home or business will have on the existing system. The city is limited by state and federal law to only charge fees that match the actual and reasonable cost to approve the application or permit and that are proportionate to the impacts created by the development. The city and developers are building roads to meet the needs of the residents and keep up with growth. However, the city is limited by state and federal law to only require the construction of roads to meet the needs of the project itself, not the needs of the entire city. If the city wants the developer to build more than what is required for the project, the city must pay for or reimburse the developer the cost of building the larger improvement. The city is trying to not raise taxes or fees to subsidize growth, so this requires balancing the need for the improvement, the funding available to build it at the best cost for the residents, and the developer's proportionate share of the road. What about impact fees? Can't they be used to build roads? In addition to building and permit fees, the city charges impact fees for every home and business built in the city based on the impact it will have on the existing infrastructure. These fees are restricted to mitigating impacts of new growth activity. Impact fee funds cannot be used to cure existing system deficit. For example, impact fees can build new water tanks, sewers, parks, and roads, and buy excess capacity in those systems. But these funds cannot be used for maintenance, such as fixing potholes, repairing old water pumps, or replacing old playground equipment. Additionally, the city can charge impact fees for the developer's proportionate share of future city roads, but cannot charge the developer the entire cost of the future road, since the total amount needed to build a road sometimes won't be obtained until years in the future. The road will oftentimes not be built when the residents move to the project. The city has six years to spend or commit the funding raised through impact fees. If a new home is built in Saratoga Springs in 2022. The road impact fee is about $872 per household. 
The city collects this money from this and other development activity until it has enough money to pay for large projects. In the example of a road impact fee project, the city would need to collect the fees from about 1,147 homes before it could afford to build a $1 million road expansion project that was impact fee eligible. Could the city build more roads now to get further ahead of growth? Technically, yes, the city could. However, the council has chosen not to do this in most cases. The reasoning is that money for prospective projects must be spent from taxes or raised by bonding. Bonding requires current residents to subsidize the annual payments. While bonding could get projects built sooner, it would place the burden on current residents instead of the residents moving into the new development. In short, the council is being responsible by trying to keep costs as low as possible for the existing residents and letting new development fund itself. Look for the next video in our residential development series that will explain how the general plan and zoning map are used to guide land development in the city. Still have questions or concerns? We are happy to address them all. Contact us at comments at saratogaspringcity.com.